Hello, hello, everyone. Matthew LeBennis, and Central Place Winter Center. Um, I'm joined with Jonathan Williams. I'm from Apex Storm in uh, North Texas. And today we're going to talk about the long range outlook into November and also the preliminary Plains Winter 2018 19 outlook um, into the next, obviously, the winter time. And as we go through this EPS data, you can see there's a deepening trough in the 10 to 15 day. Um, the reason for this is a EPO that looks to become negative. And again, with a negative EPO, you get a trough down into the central United States. And what do you do when you ha that happens? You get nice cold anomalies, especially down here in the central plains. So basically what we're going to be looking at here is obviously, like I said, a trough. Uh, we, for us to see uh, wintry precipitation and a stronger, a stronger cold front, we really do need to see uh, that trough building farther southwest, digging farther southwest, rather. Uh, and then that would really probably help enhance the cold and also the precipitation, which could also lead to wintry weather. Yeah, and again, this is so far out there right now that there's going to be a lot of trends the next couple of days. So, again, we'll keep you updated on this. But, again, if we get that southwestern trend, uh, we can get the colder weather and potentially wintry weather for m many of us and from Texas all the way up to Nebraska. All right, so this is the 850 um, temperature anomaly. So this is basically the temperature anomaly that's up a thousand to ten thousand feet up and what this is showing is pretty darn cold weather um, coming from Canada and dipping down to the central United States and again that's the reason for this is the deepening trough um, and also the warm, warm temperatures up by Alaska so that, without, without, when that happens um, it, again it, turn, it makes the trough deepen across the central United States and in turn creating very cold temperatures um, potentially across the central United States uh, that warm air um, in the in Alaska is is in response to a ridge, and that really does help uh, dislodge some of that colder air farther south into the plains. Then, obviously, if we do see a ridge also develop along the east, that could really help it uh, sustain itself in the plains. Yeah, it's gonna help also with the ridge in the east. What that does is it takes a storm track. It has a storm track go basically from southwest up northeast, which again. If we can get that amplified storm track and the deepening trough, it can expel for wintry weather potentially in the plains as we head into early November. Um, so the base, next thing we're going to look at is the AO. And when the AO goes negative, that means there's a ridge in, uh, in uh, Canada. And basically what that does, it creates blocking. And so when you have the blocking up in Canada, usually that means there's cold across the central and eastern United States when you see the AO go negative. So with the uh, AO being negative, this would also this would bring us some colder weather in the plains and basically for most of the United States. Um, we're really looking like we'll probably stay on the negative side through early November, so that could help us get um, definitely more uh, cold, uh, prolonged cold air. Uh, uh, just basically prolonged uh, cold air. Yeah. So also the next thing we're looking at is the EPO. And again, that was what I talked about earlier. What has when there's a ridge in Alaska, that's basically the EPO is. And again, when the EPO goes deep and negative like this, um, that spells for a big ridge by Alaska. And again, when you have a big ridge by Alaska, you have the jet stream um, go over that ridge and dip down and create a big time trough in the central United States. And again, what that does, again, creates cold. And then when you have cold, you have wintry weather. So something we'll have to watch for is definitely is that jet stream is it will probably become more amplified. And this would definitely bring uh, that southwest trough, which would really help us bring, um, which would help the at least the chance of wintry weather as we head into late October, or the very last days of October, actually, and as we enter uh, the month of November. Yes, okay. So the next thing I wanna, we want to look at is the CFS Weekly. Um, these, mo these model runs, CFS, not a great model to look at, but what I like to see um, from this model run uh, perfectly is this this warmth here across um, the northwest, and then this this big time uh, trough that digs in across the so southwest and digs into the central United States. And when you see this look um, in early in no early November, it's a pretty cold look. Uh, again, it, it, if we're dealing with this in November, and you see uh, values of negative two um, in, in under places as well, so what you're going to see is pretty cool temperatures. And again, we're in November. Um, the November temperatures are cool as they are, but when you get their negative degrees and negative anomalies to be cooler, uh, it's pretty darn cold, especially in the month of November and maybe as you had in December.
So the next thing we're going to look at is the latest run at the European weeklies. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, there's a big ridge coming across the eastern United States. Is going to spill warmth? Not necessarily, and we're going to talk about that. Um, you can see that what I'm, what I'm seeing is the EPO is this consistently a ridge across Alaska. And when you see that, that signal, I mean, it spells cold um, for most of the central plains and into Texas and anywhere far south like that. Um, and as we go farther into time, again, these models, it's not a perfect model. So like this big ridge that shows across the United States, it's not going to happen the way it shows. So don't be freaking out because there's a ridge uh, across the eastern United States. But again, with this look right here, it's uh, pretty cold for November, especially here in the plains. Uh, something that I do want I do want people to know here is that just because we are not in the uh, like the plains aren't in that blue color, this is just geopotential height, not our temperatures. So even when we're in that uh, above uh, like that in the yellows and the oranges, that still doesn't mean we're not cold. We can have a ridge and we can still be on the cold side. So definitely with that blocking continuing or not that blocking that ridge. With the negative e or the EPO, um, that would definitely allow for some colder air to enter uh, the plains. Yeah, and again, when you have positive highs, doesn't mean you're going to have warm temperatures. It just means that there could possibly be a ridge. But again, just because you have a ridge over you, doesn't mean you're going to have colder temperatures. And again, I do see uh, a trough trying to develop here across the south southwest United States, even as we head into December. So that's a thing that we keep another eye on. Um, next thing is the analog for November. Basically, I made this analog um, discussing the solar index, which basically right now we're in a solar grand minimum. Um, so basically, when you have these cold shots, they get made even colder. And well, this is the upper height for November with a solar index this low. And you can see a southwestern trough, especially here, um, with cold temperatures digging into the southwestern United States. So when I see a when I see a southwest trough um, in the models, and I see it in the long range, I agree with it because it's in the analog. So Again, that's the thing. Also, another thing we need to look out for is this potential southwest trough, and it's having a lot more agreement um, in the analogs and in the models. So, what pattern are we really looking at for this neat, uh, for this uh, winter? You've heard La Nina, you've heard all of those, but we're looking at a weak to moderate El Nino in the 2018 to 19 winter season. So, we'll probably have a weak El Nino in the early part of the winter through about February and then we'll, it'll probably turn into a moderate El Nino with this in mind the plains overall a lot of times where it's above normal but we, sh we should expect ab uh, below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation but by February with the moderate El Nino uh, we would probably see a little bit slightly warmer temperatures but also a stormier pattern now the question is everybody's wondering is how much snow will fall this winter time will tell for that yeah, and again, um, there's also signs that we could be heading to Madoki El Nino, which is basically a central-based El Nino. So you're going to have the warm temperatures in the west, basically in the central Pacific, and not all the way through. So, and again, a Madoki El Nino favors colder anomalies, especially, again, the central and east United States. So, again, with that, at Madoki, we can still have cold temperatures, especially in December and January. And you get the moderate building in February. Uh, definitely, and yes. Even with the modern El Nino, I don't want you to. I don't want anybody to think that we still won't have a cold. We won't have cold shots in there. Yeah. We sp we still will. Yeah. But uh, but the overall pattern kind of shifts to a slightly warmer temperature yeah. as we head into February. Yeah. All right. So this is what the CPC has for the Enzel regions, and you can see it's favoring a a weak to moderate El Nino developing by winter time. You can see it's. At right now, values of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, um, especially in, in February. Some of these models are picking up uh, some moderate hints uh, over here. I do think it does weaken a little bit after we um, head out of winter. But that's still far out, but it again it favors more of a weak El Nino to potentially moderate El Nino as we head into February. Oh, I definitely agree with you on that, and I definitely agree with this too because I do think the Nino will kind of strengthen as we head farther into the winter but again um we do see that kind of a, a weakening trend as we head farther out and then um that's basically that for the el nino but um definitely definitely this year will definitely be an el nino of course like i said the madoki which could actually bring cool uh, colder temperatures 
Yeah. All right, so this is a model um, from Joe Bastardi and his associate over here. I'm basically showing what could happen this winter, especially with this is the years that had a Madoki El Nino, had a low solar, and you can see, I mean, the ridge by Canada is what I'm seeing. is a lot of warm temperatures by Canada. So, I mean, yeah, it's going to be kind of warm in Canada. And you can see just the whole United States in cold. I'm not saying this was going to happen during the winter. Not every year is the same. But a general idea for me is cold during the winter. I definitely agree with that ridge up in Alaska. This really lets some cold air get down into uh, the uh, U.S. Especially, I'm really seeing mainly it will be across most of the U.S. But the uh, coldest temperatures look to definitely be uh, east of the Rockies, for sure, uh, into the eastern U.S., and we'll obviously watch those geopotential heights as we head throughout the um, throughout the winter. Yeah, and again, um, just because cold temperatures are in the east doesn't mean we can't have very cold temperatures here, and especially with El Nino years, when you have cold temperatures in the plains, you have a and during usually during El Nino years you're gonna have a as it's a tropical jet, which again, coupled with the cold temperatures, does give us a chance more of a chance for snowy. Uh, potentially as we head into December, January, and February. So that's another thing to look out for as we head into winter. Um, and here is the European seasonal model for the whole winter. And you can see basically showing the same thing. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but definitely warm temperatures up in Canada and Alaska and colder temperatures down as we head south um, into the plains into the east. Uh, definitely pretty much the exact or close to the pattern that that one showed. So. Another thing we're also looking at here is uh, the analogs, of course, and those really are matching what we're thinking will have this winter. So uh, definitely looking at below normal temperatures for the plains for the most part as we head through the winter. Yeah, and then precipitation. I can't really see the greens, but there is a nice uh, citrocle jet. You can see it heading into Can California and pushing out into the central plains. And again, with this as a citrocle jet, um, you, we can get some above average snowfall. We do get the right kind of pattern to develop. Um, so again, at the pattern with the cold temperatures does spell a snowy, snowy potential as we head into winter. Uh, however, the one thing I do see with this graphic is, like you said, that subtropical J, it'll definitely bring uh, an amplified storm track to the southern and just the plains in general um, as we head through um, the winter. But then we see the greens just because there is, and another thing I do want to point out real quick, typically right in the Ohio Valley, we do typically begin to see a drier pattern there. I do think this model extends that a little too far to the southwest. Uh, however, I like the general pattern I'm seeing here. It really is matching our analogs, so definitely uh, likely above normal precipitation. Yeah, and, and just because you have... Um, below below average precipitation doesn't mean you can't have above average snowfall, especially in the winter months um, when you have the cold temperatures. Um, the the snow can grow bigger and you can get more uh, inch more snow inches. Um, so just because you have below average temperature or below average precipitation doesn't mean you can't have above, above average snowfall. So I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is his graphic. I'm gonna let him talk about this graphic and what he thinks about it. So um, this is basically what I'm looking at for the uh, winter 2018 through 19 outlook. Well, the big null graphic we showed earlier with the temperatures, uh, could you actually refer to that real quick? Yeah. So notice how that on the as you head farther west of the Rockies, that's where we're looking at above normal temperatures. And for the plains, uh, then we're looking at below normal temperatures if you go back to my graphic. Uh, again, this is kind of preliminary. I'll reach. I'll, I'll. This is not my official winter forecast, but it's kind of the preview of what we're looking at here. But so definitely, I definitely agree with the um, uh, the uh, mid null graphic from the Euro. So definitely looking at below normal temperatures for the plains with above normal temperatures as we head into Canada and Alaska. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is high confidence yet, but I do think there is a higher confidence about there being below average temperatures, especially in the central and southern plains, especially with the El Nino, uh, the analog packages, and everything that's really fitting in to this kind of pattern as we head into the winter. And again, if you're a snow lover, uh, this could be your year, especially the subtropical jet, but 
still a lot of a lot of time to go a lot of things that could still change in the pattern as we head into winter but right now it's looking pretty favorable for coal and snow especially in the plains so yeah i i definitely agree with you on that uh especially with the amplified storm track i will release my official winter outlook pretty soon as well as the precipitation outlook yeah so so that is the video for today um again this is looking like a cold outlook uh, november looks cold december could become cold it's a matter of time will tell but again if, you're, if you like snowy times you like cold it's definitely in the table that is coming so hope you guys enjoyed the video today um we'll have more videos like this hopefully out soon sooner than later um so again this has been a great this is a great time today uh, with jonathan and again cold temperatures coming um i hope you guys enjoy this video and have a great night uh anything any last comments from you uh, that's all I really got. Uh, we really appreciate you watching this video. Um, definitely, we'll both keep you updated on social media. Uh, so definitely go follow us on Twitter. Yeah, and again, uh, I'll have his link, <coughs> his link of his YouTube in my description. Go fo go follow him. Um, he needs some subscribers, so go go subscribe to him. Um, he has great videos. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, again, it's looking good. So have a have a great evening, everyone. And goodbye.